David Young. Thank you, Madam Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests, welcome! Ladies and gentlemen, under this plain and unassuming demeanor lays another persona. You can call me Yes, Toastmasters just changed my life. Really. <laughs> Toastmasters just changed my life. At one time, I had no confidence. I could not speak in public. But Toastmasters changed that. Yes! Now I'm overbearing. People can't shut me up. And I've become anal retentive. More anal retentive than Deb Lee. But as Toastmasters, we know we're a breed apart, don't we? Some liken us to a cult and say we do brainwashing. I like to call it selective communication enlightenment. It sounds sexier. Toastmasters are sexy people. Quick, look to your left. Look to your right. Well? Some are sexy. If the light shines just right. If they're all dressed up. Okay, after a few drinks. But as Toastmasters, we know that we can take critical evaluation while civilians cannot. I once told my neighbor friend that he needed to work on his pitch of vocal variety. He just avoids me now. I once told a female friend that her rate was too low. She slapped me. But who needs friends when you have Toastmasters? I love Toastmasters clubs. They're our proving ground. Yes, I belong to 16 clubs. I just can't get enough of the banging of the gavel, the shining of the timing lights. It's sort of napalm in the morning feeling, in a flashback kind of way. And of all the roles, I love to be the speech evaluator. I use the inverse sandwich technique. I tell people what they stink at, give them a glimmer of hope, and tell them what they stink at again. It's very effective. Try it. I also love being the speech grammarian. Listening for the is misuse of English language, double clutches, ahs, ums, and buts. And when I get the report, I can see people's faces turn red. I once told a visitor she had too many butts. <laughs> she began to cry and left the meeting. That's okay. Not everyone can do something about their butts. <laughs> I'm working on my fifth DTM. One is fine, but five means I'm um, super fine. Don't you agree? I love using the stage. It reminds me of the Academy Awards. <gasps> if Toastmasters had an Oscar, I'm sure it would be molded in the likeness of me. Toastmasters leadership. Awards and contests really make us who we are. Don't my pins and ribbons sparkle and shine? I feel like a decorated general at a parade. <gasps> if Toastmasters had a general, I would like to be that. I could hear you now saying, Hail Toastmaster General! Hail Toastmaster General! Hail Toastmaster General! 
Now I know what it's like to feel like Caesar. But believe me, Toastmasters, I'll be watching my back. Yes, when I wear my pins and ribbons to my favorite places like Walmart and the dollar store, civilians will ask, are those Boy Scout awards? They're so ignorant and disrespectful. I was a division governor once, where I learned key motivational phrases like, Okay, I'll buy you lunch. Okay, I'll buy you dinner. Okay, I'll paint your house. I don't keep competing contests that much anymore because I once had a problem with a judge. So judges, he never did find out what happened to a guinea pig. It just disappeared. Have you ever tried one with barbecue sauce? It's good. So my fellow Toastmasters, now you know how I went from goober to greatness. But do not fret, fellow wannabes. I know that you want to be like me someday. But do not worry. Because you can emulate others. Like our international President Mike Nataro. Is Mike here today? I certainly hope he doesn't have a pet guinea pig. <laughs> Mike, as you know, is good looking, smart, debonair, and oh, totally fantastic. But why would you want to be second rate when you can be like me? So my fellow Toastmasters, as I close, I would like to quote our media past district governor, the sassy but classy Sharon E. Nigita Hill. You don't have to like me, but remember, it's Toastmasters, baby!